Repackaging with Wise Package Studio. While we're focusing on repackaging applications as Windows Installer setups, repackaging was around long before Windows Installer. The goal is the same today. Take a vendor-provided setup and create a custom installation that may be deployed in an automated fashion within your organization. Windows Installer provides this and many other benefits. But as far as repackaging goes, it is the process by which a legacy setup may be migrated into a custom installation package. Why repackage? If you're watching this, it's a pretty safe bet that you have reason to repackage of your own. The most basic reason is to realize a customized installation suited to the needs of your organization. Repackaging a legacy setup into Windows installer format introduces a number of additional benefits that you're also probably aware of, so I'll keep it short. There's the automated deployment support for ease of distribution. Applications managed by Windows Installer also provide self-repair and install-on-demand features where needed files are automatically installed if not present. Many repackaged applications as MSI setups to take advantage of group policy distribution, as group policy requires MSI formatted packages for assignment to computers on your network. And finally, there's the benefit of enforced standards. All MSI packages provide rollback support, uninstall, extensive support for customization from the command line or using a transform file, and this is all universal to every Windows installer setup as a key benefit of the technology itself, and it doesn't require that the developer of the package take any actions to support such capabilities. Why setup capture is part of the Wise Package Studio suite of tools, and it functions as the repackaging tool used to migrate legacy setups into custom deployment packages. It supports both its own Wise script and Windows installer setup formats, and multiple methods of capturing the changes made by a legacy setup in order to build your own custom installation package. So let's get into it. The first window presented to you by setup capture is the welcome dialog. This dialog allows you to choose one of two courses of action. You can use setup capture, which is what we'll be choosing. It allows you to capture a vendor created installation into a new customized setup, normally a legacy setup into a Windows installer package. This is what we'll be doing with WinZip, but there's this option down here below that I want to touch on briefly. First use settings. This actually allows you to create an MST of changes based on the first time execution of an MSI package. So you specify your MSI file, and then you specify the transform file, and the application launches. Here you can answer an end user license agreement, um, make setting changes, option changes, anything you want to use to customize this installation. And it uses the same process of doing a before-after snapshot or whatever method you choose to gather those changes. But instead of bundling them up into a new installation, it bundles them up into a transform file, which you can then deploy with your Windows installer package. And this allows you to easily gather changes that you want to use to customize your MSI without breaking that cardinal rule of editing an MSI directly. In this next dialog, we need to specify the name and location of the new installation you're creating. While you can specify an MSI or a WSI file, WSI is the project file for Wise Package Studio, it's recommended that you do use that WSI format and then compile to generate your MSI later. This gives you uh, a couple other capabilities when you're within the Windows Installer Editor that you don't want to get stuck without. Um, if you do create an MSI, you can always create a WSI from that later using the Windows Installer Editor. But just to save yourself some trouble and keep it clean, 
choose WSI here. So we have our location. We'll call this uh, WZ9.WSI. That's the default extension, by the way, if you don't specify an extension. Um, we have a couple of options here. You could update an existing installation if you ha already had an MSI and you wanted to add something else to it as a new feature. Um, you could use this option. We won't be doing that here. The next thing uh, is you can tell it to leave the source files in the original location, which would be scattered throughout your system where WinZip puts those files. Uh, you can save yourself a lot of trouble by copying your source files to a network location or to a location that you can access later. And when you do this, the WSI is created with pointers to the source files copied up to the specified location. And in that way, if you need to make changes or update a file or recompile your MSI later on, you don't have to reinstall WinZip to get those files back where they need. Um, were when you first created the package. So go ahead and use this feature of copying the source files during installation save. And it's also good practice to choose this store source file path names as relative path names. What this does is it uses a relative path to specify from the location of the WSI where the source files are. So it would just specify the source directory and not C Y SharePoint packages winzip source slash file name. This allows you to edit it from different locations. Say if you have a mapped drive and that drive letter isn't always the same, you don't have to worry about um, a hard path to those locations. So these are the recommended settings and we'll move on from here. The next thing we need to do is choose a method of capture. The first option is virtual capture. This option requires that you configure your virtual operating system beforehand. It allows you to capture an application and its changes without actually installing it on your system. This can be a time saver, but because the application is not actually installed, you can't reboot for further changes or run the application for the first time, so there are some limitations. This is a rather involved topic in creating it and getting it ready, so we'll discuss this in a separate training video session. The next option is Smart Monitor. This allows you to use a process which automatically monitors the actions taken by a 32-bit executable, and it captures these actions and as the installation takes place. It bundles these up and uses this as the basis for your package. Using this alone can be faster as it does not require a before-after scan and compare of the system. However, it's not considered as thorough a solution as snapshot. So let's discuss that. We'll be choosing this, the default snapshot. It does, like I said, a before and after snapshot of the system, comparing any changes that are made and using that delta as the basis for your package. This is a standard way of creating packages that most competing products also offer, and it's the most thorough. But to take it a step for, further than that, you have the option of using both the smart monitor and sna snapshot methods together. This provides you the most thorough solution, which will require some cleanup in the end, but it gives you your best chance at getting everything that you need for your package. Here Setup Capture welcomes us once again and gives us the opportunity to choose which configuration we would like to run. Um, that is the options for Setup Capture itself. You can choose the location of a configuration file that contains these settings or you can edit the settings themselves. Um, we're not going to cover this in this video but we'll go into it in more detail in another training session. So for now we'll accept the defaults. If you've taken a scan previously, you'll be presented with this dialog, which allows you to use the
the initial scan that was taken last time you went through the process or to rerun the initial scan. Unless you are stopping and starting setup capture in the process of a single package, such as in the case of a reboot, um, you will always should choose the rerun initial scan. This will take a new before snapshot of your system and it shows you the cleanest starting point and therefore the package least contaminated with extraneous files. Before the initial snapshot begins, Setup Capture presents this dialog to warn you that this may take a few minutes. Naturally, this will depend on the number of files installed in your system. The cleaner the system, the quicker it will take to scan. The Execute Installation dialog. Here you can initiate any changes you want to capture in your package. You can browse to and execute the installation program you want to capture, in this case WinZip. Any command lines you want to specify uh, can be listed there as well, but you're not limited to executing your setup from this screen. You could do it from the command line, you could do it from the run dialog, or you could do it browsing Windows File Explorer. Keep in mind that if you visit any web pages, these type of things are going to be captured in your package as well, and you may not want that. One common misconception to people that haven't been through this process before is that setup capture is recording your actions. Only the results of your actions are captured by checking the system for changes. So if you take a long time, press the back button in a dialog, retype information, adjust your settings, and then put them back again, don't worry about it. As long as the results are the desired results, you'll have the package that you're looking for. To simulate the need to restart the system, we're going to cancel out of Setup Capture and relaunch the process. Starting over again, you do have to complete all the same dialogues as before, as Setup Capture doesn't know that you're restarting an existing installation. Because we are continuing an installation, we'll take the option of using our existing snapshot. Here, we don't need to execute the installation again, but we should make sure that any changes that we want included in the package have been made. And then we begin the second snapshot process, which will of course be compared to our initial snapshot to determine the changes that have been made. Here we're shown the items included in our scan. The before after delta determined these files to have changed or been added to the system. You can choose files, registry entries, shortcuts, any entries, and you should review these items and remove anything that clearly doesn't belong. Uninstall references should be removed as shortcuts because the Windows installer will handle its own uninstall. Also, things like What's New and Read Me are good to remove because users may try to remove them themselves, and Windows installer would therefore reinstall or repair those as missing files. This next area allows you to review the exclusions that were made, the things that were captured but are not going to be included in your package for your review. There's some reports you can also generate. I find that reviewing things to be removed from your package after the setup capture process is complete is more productive. The finish screen here, we enter the manufacturer, 
choose the default directory. This isn't always correct by default, but WISE does try to choose the right default directory based on what it sees in your package. And from here, we generate the package and then launch Setup Capture to review it for final changes and compile our MSI. With Setup Capture complete, launching Windows Installer Editor will automatically load the MS MSI or WSI that you last generated. So our WinZip package is already loaded. We can go through, update product details, information, optional. The main thing I really want to show here, we'll go through the Windows Installer Editor itself in more detail in another video, but here, this I really feel is the best place to look for files and registry entries that you want to remove. One tip here is if you right click you can choose hide empty folders. makes it much easier to identify where files actually are. In this case all the files are in the WinZip directory so we know we're pretty safe here. For registry you have the same option, hide empty folders. See here we have some SQL Server entries that were caught that we know have nothing to do with WinZip, so delete them from here. And another key area here is the build options. If you want to create an executable to deploy um, and include the Windows installer runtime itself, you can. For media, the default is to have a self-contained MSI package with the files included. But you can make these changes here if you like. You can have the files uncompressed. A particularly large package, you may want to leave the files uncompressed and external. Something like WinZip doesn't really uh, pose that kind of a problem. And from here, we can hit Compile. And the MSI is generated. Questions. A customary slide for the end of any presentation, you'd have to yell awfully loud for me to hear your questions right now. The good news is you're at AppDeploy.com, and there's a community of your peers willing to help answer your questions and resolve your problems. I'm there too, but if you have any questions about this, please take advantage of the message boards here at the site. Thank you.